Hey guys, on today's video, we're gonna be setting up your external hard drive or external SSD. Same deal, same instructions. So let's just get started right away. On the top right hand corner of your screen, you're gonna see this. This is for your spotlight search. Just click on it. Once you click on it, start typing up disk utility. Once you guys see disk utility, just open it up, which by the way, some of you may have it down here below as well. So just open up disk utility. So once we open up disk utility, you might see something like so. This is perfect. So what we have to do in this case, before we get started with anything that is, is go up here and you will see view. Just click on this icon. What I need you to choose is show all devices. So click on show all devices. That's the very first step. Once we choose to show all devices, we're gonna see this. Don't touch anything that says internal. So what we're gonna do is just click up here Okay, to get rid of internal because we don't want to see anything that's internal. And down here, you might see external. So make sure you open this up external. Just see that arrow here on the right hand side. Just make sure you see that you might see two right here, or you might even see more partitions. It doesn't really matter. Now remember what we're going to do is format formatting will erase the entire content within the external hard drive. So this setup is usually for new external hard drives. However, if you're having problems making it work on your Mac, you still need to properly format it, which again will delete everything from within the external hard drive or external SSD. So I also want to highlight that it doesn't really matter which brand you guys have. It could be a Seagate, WD, anything really, it's going to be the exact same instructions. And that's because the software that you might have inside that external hard drive will cause you most likely problems later on. And that's why we get rid of any files that are already inside the external hard drive or external SSD that you just got. Because every time I deal with a problem from anybody is because they install that software, it's no longer up to date, it doesn't work with their Mac. Because maybe you just updated your Mac and the program's no longer compatible with the new Mac OS. So at this point, just think of your external hard drive or external SSD like a USB stick. You can just drag and drop stuff into it and you can also set up Time Machine to back up your entire Mac, which is something that's already installed on your Mac. So might as well take advantage of everything that your Mac has. And that way you do not need to install and download any software for your external hard drive or external SSD to work. So right now we're gonna get started. On the top right hand corner of your screen, you will see Erase under Disk Utility. So Erase again, will delete everything. So we're gonna click on erase. So once we click on erase, we're gonna see this option down here below. So I'm gonna see this here. So you can format it in many ways. And right now you can name it as well. So what I wanna name this for now is just external HDD, no, SSD, I guess. Same thing, it doesn't really matter what you guys name it, it could be your own name. Then from here, this is the important part what we have to choose. So you're gonna have quite a few options down here below and you might even see a few more options than me in this case, which is perfect actually. And what we wanna do is choose, if you just want it to work for Mac, just choose Extended Journaled. That's the choice that you wanna make. Now if you want this to work with Mac and PC, so if you wanna plug it into any Windows machine and work, then what you wanna go for is XFAT. XFAT will take care of that so you can transfer files between your Mac here and any PC. Now let's say you're having problems with older PCs or maybe you want to set this up for your TV or anything like that, you might have to choose this, which is actually the worst format, but some TVs, they're pretty old and they only take this type of format. So it really does depend what you want your external hard drive to do. Most likely you will want to transfer files between your Mac and other PCs and not just between Macs. So we're gonna format it as XFAT first. So let's just choose that. We're just gonna name this as so. Now this is pretty important as well. It should say partition. And I'm gonna teach you why it should say partition and not master root. Now this can also be a problem if you're formatting this for your TV you should actually try this format, master and not partition. Because partition could have problems if you're formatting this for your TV. But again, right now we're doing this to transfer information between Macs and PCs, and even between Macs, because this works regardless with everything. So we're just gonna go in partition. Now before I press erase, 
if this is an older external hard drive or external SSD, then you might want to go into security options, which is in the bottom left hand side. So I'm just going to show you that and you're going to see this. And this is just in case you want to maybe sell your external hard drive or external SSD, then you would at least take it up to here for fast or here. Or if you have really sensitive information, go up to the most secure. If you're formatting this way, by the way, it's going to take you forever. It's going to take you a very long time. If this is your initial setup, you don't really have to worry about this. Just leave this as is, press OK, and you're good to go. Again, if you're brand new, you're just setting up this for the first time, you don't even have to go into security options. You're just fine. We're just going to press on erase. So we're going to go ahead on the bottom right hand side, press erase. Once we do that, we should see this and it should be done. Yeah. So don't worry about it. If it takes you a little bit longer than for me, this is an external SSD. So it's a little bit faster than an external hard drive. However, for most of you, since it's brand new, it will not take that long regardless. So we're just going to press undone. And at this point in time, if you wanted this to work, just to transfer files between your Mac and another Windows PC, you're basically done and I don't need to show you anything more. However, I am going to show you Time Machine if you want to back up your entire Mac and other options as well. But let's say you're done in your desktop. You might even see this now. See this icon? That's exactly what I named my external. So I can open this up. So right now it's open and I can drag and drop stuff into here. So let's say I created a file here on my Mac, like this folder. So I opened it up, I can just drag and drop it in there. So that's how easy it is with external hard drives. It would be exactly like a USB stick. You can just drag and drop stuff into it or copy and paste stuff into your external hard drive in order to transfer it to another computer or just to have it as a backup. For now, I'm just going to close this up though. And at this point in time, I also want to highlight if you're having any problems, you're getting any errors, just try again, format it again, or you guys see right here, it says external. Make sure to open this up. So you should see an arrow here. Just make sure to open it up and you're going to see two options. Select the second option. Once you select that second option, format that option. So again, do that if you're having any problems and only format that particular option. And then it should work and you shouldn't get any further errors. Also, if you're getting any errors, try formatting as journaled, although you might format it as XFAT in the end, format it as journaled first. I'm actually even going to show you that right now because we're going to do some partition work so you guys can see exactly all the power that your external hard drive has. So we're going to go on and select the first option again. And in this case, we're going to go on the top and we're going to select partition. Again, if you're having any problems with partition, just make sure to select the correct options and format as journal first if you're having any problems. Right now we have it formatted as XFAT, which doesn't matter. We're just going to partition this right now. So let's go ahead and partition. So what does partition do? Well, let me just show you. This is very graphic. So that's the good thing about this. So right now I have one partition and that means it's only one external hard drive, right? So I can divide this into parts and this is great if you want to keep certain parts for maybe just for PC and Mac, other parts that you just want for your documents that only other Macs can read, only your Mac can read. So we're going to go ahead and click on format. We're going to choose journaled. And then from here, once you select journaled, you're going to see this plus sign available. So it's very important to choose journaled first and click on that plus sign. What did that do? that brought up my external hard drive to be partitioning into two. So it's kind of like having two external hard drives right now or two external SSDs, which is awesome. So right now this external right here has 500 gigs and this other one has another 500 because it's split it up in the middle. Now we can give one more than the other, but for now what I'm going to name this so we don't get confused is name this PC and Mac because this format was XFAT. Now this is just for you guys to know what's happening. I'm also going to name it XFAT just to make it very, very clear what's going on. Now, once I do that, I can actually bring up or bring it down. So to do that, I can go ahead and just click here 
and move this around. So I'm giving this partition less space because I maybe I don't want to transfer that much information or I know I'm going to not transfer too much information between Macs and PCs. I'm just going to transfer some information. So maybe I don't want to give it that much space. Maybe I just want all this space to be for documents and backups. So I'm going to leave that as is. I'm going to click where it says here, just anywhere here actually. And then it's going to highlight this portion. And from here, I'm just going to name this time machine. And that's because I'm going to teach you what time machine is. You don't need to name it like that. You can name it backup if you like. And I'm going to show you what time machine can do for your Mac to back up your entire Mac. That means your files, your programs, your Mac OS, everything. So we're just going to click on apply for now. Now again, you should get a warning like so because partitioning also erases everything within your external hard drive or external SSD. So if you want to change your partition size later on, you really can't because you will have to erase everything from within it again. So although you could, but again, you're erasing everything again. So make sure to choose the right size right now. So we're going to go ahead and click on partition. So really think about how much space you want to leave for a backup for your entire Mac and space as well, just to transfer files between your Mac and a PC, for example, or just between Macs. That's why I suggest just doing it as XFAT. So that way you're free to do whatever you like. And running just the other part, which is Time Machine, which um, actually Time Machine cannot be read by PCs. Your Time Machine backup will actually only be able to be read by other Macs. So let's say you buy another MacBook or you upgrade or maybe your Mac crashes. You can always take that Time Machine backup plug it into your new Mac and transfer everything over. And yes, it's going to transfer your files, photos, any videos that you guys had, music, any apps that you guys had installed on this Mac as well. And it does include your Mac OS. So right now it's done. So I'm just going to click on done and I'm going to show you what just happened. So the best way to show you what it just happened is showing you this right here on my desktop. So right now I have, it's almost like having two external hard drives because I have one right here, which is PC and Mac XFAT. That's just the transfer information between them. And then I have Time Machine, which will be my backup for my entire Mac. Now, before I keep going to show you Time Machine and all that stuff, if you just want your external SSD or external hard drive just to work with Macs or between Macs, all you have to do is not even partition anything just format it as journaled, okay? And that's all you would do. Now let's keep going. We're gonna go and look for your system preferences. That's down here below for most of you. If you don't see it, again, on the top right hand side of your screen, you're gonna see your spotlight search. So just click on that spotlight search. And in your spotlight search, I want you to type up system preferences. Just open that up. And for now, I'm just gonna close this utility because we don't need it anymore. However, under System Preferences, we're going to go into Time Machine. Time Machine will be down here just beside Sharing and between Startup Disk. Or if you're running an older Mac OS, it could be somewhere else. But you're going to have, the, have it there anyways because it's something built into your Mac already. So click on Time Machine. And here's my Time Machine. So I already have a Time Machine set up, and that's why you guys see this. But for most of you, you will not see anything here. You're just going to see Select Disk. So that's actually what we're going to do. We're just going to click on select disk and you might want to have a check mark there, but for now I'm going to actually leave that off just because I don't want it to do a backup right away. What I want to do is just select my disk. And at this time I do have this option here, time machine, which is the one that we just formatted. We also have PC and Mac XFAT, but I suggest just setting this one up. So we're going to click right there. We're going to use disk. Well, right now I have another external hard drive, which has a backup of my Mac. That's why I'm getting this message. And I'm just going to choose use both. But most of you will not get that message unless you already have this set up with another external hard drive. So right now what I have here is this added. And this is the time machine that we just set up. So what I suggest doing for most of you is just having a check mark here. It says backup automatically. So make sure to turn that on. And what will this do is that anytime that your external hard drive or external SSD is plugged into your Mac and turned on, it's just going to run that backup for you. 
If you don't want it to do that, if you want to back it up yourself, then don't have a check mark there. Just leave that off. But it's very important down here below in the menu to show Time Machine in the menu bar. And that way you're going to see this up here. So here's my menu bar. I'm going to see Time Machine all the way up here. So you might see a clock. That's your Time Machine. So click on that Time Machine and we're going to see these options. So we can enter Time Machine and we can back up now. So if you want to manually back up your Mac, just go into backup now and it's just going to start backing it up. So yes, this will back up your entire system, your entire Mac. So all your apps, everything, everything that you got in here, it's going to back it up. So that's what's really good about this. So does this mean you have to have your external SSD or external hard drive plugged into your Mac the entire time, like every single day, all day? No, you can back you can back it up whenever you want. You can plug it into your Mac whenever you like to do that backup if you want to run a backup. I personally have it always plugged in and always running a backup. So that way, for example, right here my last backup was done at 11 a.m. So my next backup might be done at 2 p.m. So if uh, maybe later on, maybe tomorrow, I uh, deleted something, and then I'm like, oh, whoops, I actually deleted something I didn't mean to delete uh, yesterday and I really want that back. Well, I have a backup of that. I can actually enter Time Machine and go through all my files to see that. So I'm gonna show you that in just a second. But before I show you that, I do wanna show you this as well. Since we made that change with our Time Machine, you may have seen this changing color. So you might have this PC and Mac and right now you might have your time machine set up like so. So it's going to look a little bit different than before. Now what I did right now is plugging my other external hard drive. And that's because I want to show you because I already have a time machine backup of my entire Mac. I want to show you how this time machine thing works so you know exactly what you're doing. Now again, when it comes down to time machine, if you buy a new MacBook and other iMac and you want to transfer all your files, you can just plug in your external hard drive to that new Mac and when you're setting it up, you can actually just choose time machine to transfer everything over. And that way, everything will just automatically transfer and you don't have to do really anything yourself. For now, so we don't get confused since I plug plugged in another external hard drive. I'm just going to move this to the side. And here is my time machine that I had set up from before. And there's a lot of stuff in there. So what I'm going to do is just enter my time machine just to show you how it works. If I want to retrieve something, maybe I deleted something yesterday or a few days ago, and I kind of remember the date and where it was so I can go on and retrieve that. So what I'm going to do is click on my time machine. I'm going to enter time machine. It should take me to this window right here. So why is it taking me to my desktop? Well, it says desktop here because that's where I'm at at the moment. And it's going to look through any dates. So see this on the side where it says December, November, February. I can go into my desktop how it was back in, let's say, Friday, December the 4th. Let's click there. It's going to take me all the way back to what was in my desktop on that day. So I can see I actually had a lot of stuff in my desktop back then. So let's say I deleted this screenshot by accident. I really want it back. So I can click on it. Then I can go down here below where it says restore. Click on restore. And that's going to bring it back into this desktop. So see how it just popped up here? So although it was deleted a long time ago, I can still retrieve that file. And that's really great about Time Machine. But anyways, I don't really need that file. <laughs> that was just to show you guys an example. It's not just with your desktop. You guys can go into Documents or anywhere else. So it doesn't really matter where you guys put in your document. You could go into that section. So maybe it's all in your documents. Maybe it's in your movies. Anywhere there, you can go back in time and retrieve those files. Plus, hey, if your Mac ever crashes or anything happens to it, you can plug in that external hard drive, external SSD to a new Mac and transfer everything over. And by the way, if you're wondering how that works, I already have videos showing you guys in my YouTube channel how to transfer everything from one Mac to another. And I'm always showing you how to do that using Time Machine because it's so, so easy. Anyways, I just disconnected that external hard drive that I had from before. And now I have the original one that I was showing you how to set up. So here's my Time Machine part of it. And here on the other side, what I did was place this. So this is the one that I can click into and just drag and drop any files into this space. Or I can even make folders inside of it, such as this one right here, and have any information inside that partition. 
So that's what it comes down to partitions. It's really great. And you can have a lot of partitions happening at the same time, depending how do you want to split up your information. Now, what I'm going to do is go back to disk utility just to show you one more thing. So under disk utility, I'm just going to close this up and I have a lot of stuff happening here. So don't mind that guys. And that's because we did our partitions. So here's our first partition. Here's our second one. So if we close this one up, this is the main one. So I don't need to open that up. So again, if you guys don't see all your partitions and everything, it would be under external and you don't have to click on that arrow. Once you click on that arrow, you're going to see everything that you got right now under your partitions. So I can click on my PC partition or I can click on my time machine. Anytime I want to erase everything from within it, I can just go on and format it again just by pressing erase. Now remember, usually what I recommend having your time machine partition as the biggest one because that means it's gonna do a better backup of everything and more backups of everything. So let's say you have in your Mac about 200 gigs of files in total, then I would suggest having your time machine partition to be at least at the very least 400 gigs. So maybe double the size. So that way we can guarantee that you have a pretty good backup of your files. Now, when it comes down to any other partitions, well, it's up to you. Now, another question I get is, can I partition or change the size later on? Well, if we do that, let me show you. I'm going to click on partition right now. If I try to do that at this point in time, I am risking stuff and I might be erasing other stuff. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's say I just want to format this right here. I can. I could actually do that and my time machine will not be affect it at all. However, it might. So I would never, never, never <laughs> format anything, any partition, if I didn't want to risk the other partitions. And by risk, I mean erasing all of them as well. So make sure your very first setup, your very first format is the one that you want to go on forever until you guys would like to get rid of all your information from your external SSD or external hard drive. And also if you just bought an external SSD or external hard drive because your Mac is running out of space and you want to keep information there, it's no longer a backup if you're just keeping your information in just one place in your external SSD or external hard drive. That just makes it one copy and you don't really have a backup. So I would suggest getting two external hard drives to have an actual backup plus your files into one thing. So what I would recommend is actually getting two external SSDs or two external hard drives in order to have an actual backup of your files because hey, external hard drive, external SSDs do fail. And if you don't eject them, for example, before you unplug them from your Mac, things can happen. So, and things happen all the time. I have a video how to try to fix those problems when that happens because a lot of people just unplug their external hard drive or external SSD from their Mac without ejecting it. And that can cause huge issues. So before we end that video, I'm going to show you how to eject your external hard drive. So yes, from disk utility, we have this right here, which will eject. So on the right hand side, see this here, just press on the first one, it's going to eject it. But no, you don't really have to do this every single time you plug in your external hard drive code to your disk utility. What you have to do is actually just right click on your external hard drive to eject it. So what we have to do before we unplug it from our Mac, maybe we, we are done, we can go ahead and just right click on it and choose eject. So before you unplug your external hard drive from your Mac, always, always eject. We're going to do that right now. For example, it's going to ask me, do I want to eject all? Yes, because you want to eject your time machine since we have two partitions. So we're going to go ahead and eject. They should disappear from my desktop. I shouldn't see them anywhere. And right now, and only right now, can I unplug them from my Mac? And it's going to be safe. So that's how to eject your external hard drive from your Mac safely. Now, another question I get sometimes is that your time machine uh, never turned any other color. Don't worry about it. If it's still yellow, like this one here, it's not a, really a problem. It just happens. I'm not really sure why that happens, but uh, with some people, that happens. And uh, I did have an external hard drive before where it just stayed yellow and never turned to this type of icon. Again, not a big deal. Now, let's say you would like to repartition your external hard drive. There's only one way to do that, and that's by erasing everything. So as long as you guys plug in your external hard drive, go into Disk Utility once again, which if you don't find it, just go into your Spotlight search on the top right hand side of your screen, and you're just going to type in Disk Utility like so and just open it up. We are going to select the second option. So under internal, never touch internal, going to external, you're going to see this. Also make sure to always have show all. So once we do that and we have that, we can go on into erase 
and we can erase everything. And yes, this will erase everything. That's the only way we can repartition our external hard drive. So make one partition bigger than the other or just move stuff around. So in this case, we're going to choose journal because this will work just with Macs. And I have a lot of people that just want their external hard drive to work with Macs. So journal is perfect. So we can go on into erase. Now our first erase will just make one huge partition and then we're gonna split it up. So I always suggest doing this just in case you've made a mistake and you want to do this again. Yes, you can go on and repartition everything so you can set up different sizes for every single thing that you would like. So if you want your time machine to be a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger, right now would be the time to do it since most likely in your first initial setup, maybe you made a mistake just following the video. So we're gonna go ahead and press undone and right down here, we should see a second option if you don't remember we do have this arrow click on that arrow and we should see this now if you're having problems again just click on your first your second option I mean and just format this part of it and not the first part because um for some reason sometimes it creates errors once you try to format this part anyways what we're gonna do is go on the top right hand side we're gonna see partitions click on partitions and then from here we can just repartition anything you would like so if you made a mistake in your initial setup this is how to do it so first of all always have journal selected first once we do that we're gonna see this plus sign down here we're gonna add a partition now let's say i already showed you in another video how to do two partitions and so on so we're gonna add a few more so we're gonna click on plus and we can move this around so once you move this around you're gonna make one partition bigger than the other so we have three right now and i would never suggest actually touching the size so right here telling you how many gigs this partition is at do not touch this so don't type something into there that can actually create errors because everybody's math is not the best what i suggest doing is just moving this around in order to choose how big you was like your partition so maybe I want this one to be about that size. I want this one to be a little bit bigger. And this one, obviously it's gonna be the biggest one, but it's almost the same thing as this one here. So what I could do for this partition is name this one Mac, because this one will be journaled just for Macs. Now let's say I want this other partition just to be for PC and Mac. So transfer stuff between my PC and the other Mac. So if I have Windows machine, this will work. So I'm gonna choose XFAT for that. And then this one down here, I'm gonna choose as time machine. Cause I know a lot of people like that, having your time machine just in one, PC and Mac, and then just Mac files in the other one. So we're just gonna go ahead and apply. We're gonna just partition this and that's it. That's all we have to do right now. It's gonna bring it up to three partitions. So we can do this all the time. But remember, anytime that you're formatting or repartitioning your external hard drive or external SSD, you are erasing everything from within it. So don't have any files or any pointer files in there. If um, again, this is a new external hard drive, new SSD, there might be some files there from the factory, which there's a bunch of programs in there or just one or two programs in there that don't even work for Mac. Don't worry about those. Those are not good. We're trying to avoid those so you don't have any future problems on your Macs. That's usually when I hear problems with anybody's external hard drive or SSD. It's due to the fact that they installed this third party software on their Mac and it's not working properly or they don't know how to get their files back or they just bought a new Mac and it doesn't work anymore because it's not even compatible. So to avoid all that, just format it using the stuff that you guys have in your Mac already and use time machine in order to make a good backup of your entire Mac. But right now it is partitioning everything. It might take longer than others depending how many partitions you're doing and how much you're doing. But other than that, it should be running pretty fast like so. Click on done once you're done. And right now I do have my three partitions here on the side. Let me just show you. So I do have my PC and Mac, Mac and time machine. Obviously I can access any of them by just clicking on them. I click on this one and just drag and drop any files into there, such as this folder. I can drop it there, or I can just copy that one over and paste it on this one here. And that's how easy it is to copy and paste anything onto your external hard drive. Anyways, as for this video, we are all done. Hopefully it all made sense. Just think about your external hard drive or external SSD like a big USB stick that you can drag and drop your files into there if you just want to back them up that way or use Time Machine or to back up your entire system, which is really, really great. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you guys have any comments, questions, you guys can write down here in the comments area. Don't forget to subscribe and rate. Thank you.